Hey guys, in this video I'll be showing you how to hook up some of these uh, IRF24L01 radio transceivers. Now I have two of them here. You can buy them in several different places, but I got these off eBay for a couple dollars a piece. You can actually buy 10 for like $12, so they are extremely cheap. So I'll be using one with an Arduino Uno, and I'll be using one with a TNC2. Now I do have two more additional components. One of them is this ProShield, and this serves another purpose than just making connecting easier. I just have a little breadboard for surface. When I stick it in there, I could easily hook things up to it. That's all this is for. And then I also have these little guys, because these modules, if you take a closer look at them, they have pins all right next to each other. Now you can't stick this in a breadboard and hook it up properly, so what you have to do is make an adapter board like this one, where I have a female header in the middle, and then I have male headers going off to the side, and then I just connect them sideways with solder. Now an alternative would be just to solder wires directly to this, or to stick it into a perf board and then wire up your own connections. But because I'm working with breadboards, I just made these two little adapters to make that pretty easy for me to do. Now, starting off, what we want to do is we want to find information on these guys on how to hook them up and how to use them. Now, you might be able to tell on the top left, I have a schematic here. Well, not really a schematic, but just the layout of the actual module. Now, I have my eBay seller provided me with this information that's on his eBay list page and you want to go to your seller to figure out uh, what pins are what. Now you may see here it's an unconventional pinout. If you zoom in real closely, if you can do it real quick, that's pin 1, pin 2 is across it, pin 3 is top and over and then pin 4 is across it so it takes a zigzag pattern instead of conventional just going all the way down a column, move over and then going all the way down a column. So you have to be very careful when you hook these things up to hook them up properly or else they won't work. In worst cases, you might actually blow them up. So just be aware of that. Now let's go to Google and type in Arduino. Oops. I'm going to spell it's an NRF 24L01. Now the first link we get on Google is an Arduino Playground, and if we go ahead and click that, we get some information. They provide you a link right at the top where you can use the library, and tells you all the information on, first of all, how to hook it up, and second of all, how what some of the functions are, and it also provides examples, which is what we'll be dealing with today. Now, sometimes you won't be that lucky and actually find a library like this, or an easy-to-use library in an Arduino, Arduino Playground. So you have to look up is actually look go into the data sheet and actually look up how to interface with it. Typically, it's either I2C or SPI, and then depending on which one it is, you actually have to look up what kind of uh, functions, what kind of commands you have to send it and receive. And uh, I'll leave that for another video. But for now, because we have a library, we'll just go ahead and use that. So what you want to do is click to download it, save it somewhere where you know you can get to it. Once this is done, open up the folder. And now, this isn't what you want to put into your Arduino library, so you want to click that. And then there's a README and then MIRF. What we're going to do is find the folder with the examples and all the rest of the files. Now, go back one, and this is the folder that you want to put in your library, so just go ahead and copy that. I already have my Arduino libraries folder open, so go to your Arduino folder, libraries, and paste that in there. And now, space it, it's ready to be used with your Arduino ID, but we'll get back to that later. So go ahead and close the zip file. And going back to our documentation, as we see here, it tells us how to hook certain pins up. So on the left side is the pin on the device, and the right side is the pin on the Arduino. Uh, these pins are for an Arduino Uno, as I guess it doesn't specify, it, but <laughs> yeah, these pins are for an Arduino. So if you use any other type of Arduino, or my controller, you'll have to hook it up to appropriate pins and not follow this. For example, my TNC2, that's why I have this pin out pulled up up here because I need to hook it up to appropriate pins. It's not the same as what it is on here. Oh, on here, it says MISO to pin 12. Well, on here, my pin 12 isn't an SPI pin. MISO is all the way up here, which is pin 3. So just be aware that if you're using a different type of microcontroller, you just have to hook it up to the appropriate pins, if you will. All right, I guess let's start hooking up. So first thing I'll start with hooking in my Proto Shield to my Arduino Uno. There we go. That was easy. 
I'll plug in my two adapters. Like so. And then when you start hooking up wires, I'll start with the teensy and then go back to the Uno a little bit later. So as you can see here, I have one of the modules. I just like to keep it in the same orientation. And then if we look at our pinout, we could go ahead and start hooking things up. So pin one, again, it's this bottom right pin. It goes to ground. So take pin one and go to ground with it. Next pin is VCC and that's going across it. So go to that pin and hook it up to VCC, which is our supply voltage. All right, the next pin is CE. Now following our information here, it says CE goes to pin eight. Now we'll do the same thing because these pins are adjustable and we have control of those. Now in our TNC, our pin eight, if we look at our diagram up here, is the third one from the bottom left. Okay, the next pin is CSN. So we hook it up pin to the adapter board. And then following our information again, it says CSN is pin seven. Now as you can tell from our diagram, pin seven is right above pin eight. And that takes care of that. Our next pin is SCK. And then looking at our pinout, our SCK pin is actually up here. It's SCLK, so you get an extra letter. And that's the third one from the top left. And this is what we have to keep in mind is that uh, these pins, the MISO, MOSI, SEK, these are SPI pins. So you want to hook those up instead of 12, 11, and 13, which go to the UNO, which I'll do later. I want to hook them up to the corresponding pins in my microcontroller. So MISO will go to this MISO, which happens to be pin 3. But we'll get to that. So right now we're on... Mosi, we just did clock, so we're now uh, on Mosi, which is the next one. And Mosi, as you can see here, goes to pin 2, so right below clock. Our next pin is Miso, and we'll hook that up to Miso, which is right underneath Mosi. And there we go. As far as this library requirements, we hooked up all the pins that are required. But you'll notice there's one extra pin on the device. It's IRQ. This is an interrupt pin. Now, this pin can be used in one of several different ways and is actually configurable via software. But it's a little bit uh, too advanced to get into now, which we may get into later. But feel free to look at the data sheet or further into this library and it'll tell you how to use this pin. It's active low logic, so when it's triggered, it'll be a low. Now, you could run this to a normal pin on the Arduino. Or you can run this to an interrupt pin for several different things. If you want to know when you receive data, if you want to know when the data is finished sending, or if there's some kind of timeout, so it is configurable. But we won't be going into that now. If you want to delve into that information, go ahead and <laughs> feel free to look that up yourself. All right, so that takes care of that. Let's plug in the module. And one side is ready. Now, this could be either be sending or receiving. That's going to be determined when we upload the code to it. Moving on to our Uno. Repeating the same thing we did last time. Just following the appropriate pins. So our pin 1 goes to ground. Our VCC pin goes to our supply voltage. Now you have 5 volts and you have 3.3 volts. So you want to make sure this is on 5 volts. Our next pin is CE. According to here, CE goes to pin 8. There we go. Any more wires? Okay, our next pin is CSN, and CSN goes to pin 7. As you can see, when working with an actual UNO, it's much easier when you're following official Arduino documentation. Okay, our next pin is SCK and our SCK goes to pin 13. Now you do want to verify you actually have everything hooked up to the right pin. I actually missed the pin <laughs> earlier. Alright, our next pin is MOSI. MOSI goes to pin 11. It's pin 11. And then MISO, which is our last card pin, 
goes to pin 12, as you can see on this documentation. And there we go, that's set up, so let's plug in our module. Make sure you plug it in correctly, you don't plug it upside down, and make sure you actually have all the pins going in their holes. Otherwise, you may get some uh, funny results. All right, that, that takes care of wiring, wiring everything up. Now let's go to the Arduino side. So open up your Arduino IDE. Go to Files, Examples, and if you installed it correctly, you should see an MIRF folder. And then you see several examples here. You see Pink Client, Pink Server, Pink Server Interrupt, then Red Greed. Now we'll only be using the client, Pink Client and Pink Server. If you want to look up information on other ones, feel free, but we won't be getting into those today. So let's open up the client. <clears throat> and also Pink Server. So now that we have those to open, make it a little bit easier to deal with. And now we can decide what we want what to be. So let's plug in one of them, let's say the Uno. Alright, we'll do pink client can be the Uno. So we go to tools, select the right board, select the serial port. You do need to keep note on what uh, controller you have uh, hooked up to what serial port, because if you plug in multiple ones, you'll get multiple serial ports. It might get confusing. So right now when I plugged it in, I see that my Uno is COM4. And I'll go ahead and upload that. Okay, and that's done uploading. I'm going to go ahead and open up the serial port. Serial manager, rather. Okay, and as you can see, right now, is our serial monitor open? It was beginning and it's sending packets and it's getting a timeout from the server. Well, because our server isn't running yet, but as you can see, this is just verifying functionality. So it's sending information, but there's nothing to send the information back and it's giving you this message. Now let's plug in our other microcontroller. There we go, it's powered up, but it's still not running any code. So obviously the results won't change. Now what I want to do is select the right controller. Don't forget to change the serial port, which for this case is serial port 3, and then we can go ahead and hit upload. And there we go, that's done. Now, where'd our serial port go? Uh, no matter, just open it back up. And as you can see, now when we run the serial port, our Uno over here, it's listening information. It got information, and then it sends a reply. So it gets packet, sends reply, gets packet, sends reply, gets packet, sends reply. So as you can see, now we have a two-way bridge, and now if we close this, we can open up the other one. Ah, wrong serial port, that's right. The serial port now is actually because we changed the serial port earlier, it's, this is the T code, this is the code down here. So it's listening, got packet, sent reply, got packet, sent reply, so that's what this guy is doing. If you want the other one, we need to change the serial port. As you can see, right now it's COM4. Now, when we go to serial monitor, there we go. Now we can actually see the Uno, what the Uno is doing. So it began, it sent information, and it got information back within 11 milliseconds. So, information got information back within 11 milliseconds. And as you can see, it's pretty much working just fine now. And to verify functionality, let's just disconnect power. And as you can see, it lost communication. Go ahead and plug that back in, and there we go. It's working right off the bat. So pretty much just this, this just shows you that we have a valid link and it's communicating. What it's doing right now is the Uno is sending information to the TNC. The TNC is verifying that it got information, and it sends the same information back to the Uno, and then the Uno registers the time, how long it took to get back, and that's what this ping is. And we can go ahead and uh, look through some of the codes. So we can go ahead and close that. And we could see how you should hook things up because the library, it's the same thing that we had on our page. You can scroll through here and you could read the comments on how to use this, how you, if you want to modify it in different ways. There's a few different ways you can actually have these two things communicate. You could do one way only, so you could have this always sending from the Uno to the TNC. You could do the apps, you could always have the TNC sending to the Uno, or you could have them always sending to each other without verifying data. So this one's always sending this way, not caring for a reply. 
and this one's sending always that way, not caring for a reply. Or you could do it as this is set up as where this guy sends an information, this guy can process it, or just send different information back to it. So this guy does all the data queuing, if you will, and this guy just replies to whatever requests he gets. So he's dependent on him sending data. But there's several different ways you can approach how you want to do this. You could also pull up some information. If you look up the data on the chip, you could actually pull more information than what necessarily implemented in the library but we won't get into that either but this just goes to show you that you could uh, I use these chips and some examples now what you can do is because the Arduino IDE doesn't support two serial monitors at the same time so I open up that one open up this one it just brings up the same ones you can't monitor both of them through the Arduino IDE however another program I like to use which I'll show you real quick is called Putty It's free, you can go ahead and download it, and the page looks like this. You could actually turn that into a serial monitor, so you click Serial, COM3, and then set your baud rate, and it's default 9600. We didn't change in the libraries, and that's what the libraries use, so we could go ahead and hit Open. And now, as you can see, we have a serial monitor for one, but we could repeat that for as many serial ports as we want. So we could open up another putty window, hit Serial, change COM4. And there we go, now we can monitor both serial monitors using this method. So as you can see, this is sending and receiving information on the right side, and the left side, you might be able to tell the scroll bar is decreasing, so it is actually updating all the information. So if you guys want multiple serial monitors, you can use PuTTY, and then you could also send data. So if you type keys in, it's actually sending those keys to the monitor. If you have the code set up, it'll actually send it to the other side but I'll leave that part up to you guys. It's just, you use it the same way you would a normal Arduino CL modern interface. All right, hope you guys enjoy this. Hope it helps. See you next time.